say that I'm on a high horse I think that my horse is regular size You ever think maybe you're on a pony Going in circles on a carousel ride You're gonna say I asked for the moon I think that it's you with your head in the sky All that I wanted was somebody honest Living for more than the next good time You say that you want to change what I hope you get in everything you Everything you want You say that you need relief Well I hope you get everything you need Everything but me Cause I don't wanna stick around Trying to work it out when everything feels wrong Everything feels wrong But it's all love and it's no regrets You can call me if there's anything you Anything but me Me Yeah, yeah Me Yeah, yeah Anything you need Anything but me Go ahead and hate me As long as you need to Go ahead and break me To your mind Say I always had one foot up Well baby I've got two now Good thing I've never been afraid of goodbye You say that you want to change Well I hope you get everything you want Everything you want You say that you need relief Well I hope you get everything you need Everything but me I don't wanna stick around trying to work it out when everything feels wrong. Everything feels wrong. But it's all love and it's no regrets. You can call me if there's anything you need. Anything, anything but me.
change that so derivative I could get up tomorrow Talk to myself real gentle Work in the garden Go out and meet somebody Who actually likes me for me Change it any given time. I could get up tomorrow, talk to myself real gentle, work in the garden. Go out and meet somebody who actually likes me for me. Keep 
Jade, and we're back with another current session. And today we are joined by Muna. Thank you all so much for for coming and joining us today. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's so great. And uh, you guys came in very early. Again, thank you for doing (laughs) that. Uh, And I, I was listening to the the new album and kind of thinking about how the pandemic has changed so much of how we how musicians play music, you know, mm-hmm. how we how we come at it. And uh, the idea of sort of pre and post. And I think there's so many artists that had to reinvent themselves or like reintroduce themselves to an audience because uh, your self-titled album, it's out now. It's not a debut record by any means, no. but it feels like a reintroduction mm-hmm. from you. And so uh, I, I guess, and, you know, it does create a very pre Muna pre mm. and, and Muna now and yeah. I just I was curious how you guys uh came out of the pandemic and with that idea of the opportunity almost to to be something totally different how did you approach that the first thing that comes up for me is that I think we had an opportunity in the pandemic to just slow down and really think about yeah if we wanted to keep doing this, like we really had an opportunity actually to, um, to slow to a complete stop because we got, (laughs) we got dropped by our, uh, former label RCA during the pandemic. And we also like, even before that happened, we were having like really hard conversations about like what would allow us to, all feel fulfilled like as we continue this project it's really like a marriage like we've been together for um coming up on a decade Um, congratulations thank you so much thank you and um so you have to sometimes have like those those hard conversations and like have moments of reflection of like what would make it worth it for me to keep going um and honestly like we still do that but I think that maybe it was those moments of like hard conversations and reflection that um, allowed us to kind of turn a new page. And um, also I would say that the first two records allowed us to do a lot of processing, like, and just grow as individuals. And that has led us to this new era. So what was, what was that heated conversation I imagine, or maybe sad or joyful conversation where you guys were like, no, we're going to do this. Like, what was what was sort of the the thing that made you say, we want to keep going? I feel like we're all pretty, like, we, we've gotten pretty good at having very, like, um, I hesitate to say mature, but that is the word that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Like, measured, sort of, like, therapized conversations. Like, mm. I am feeling this. And, that, and then when you said that, it made me feel this way. And then whatever. So I don't think that conversations ever got heated, necessarily. But, um... Yeah, I think, I don't know. 
we just were, we were just in the process of like evaluating how we felt about what we were doing even before we got dropped. And I think when we got dropped, it reinvigorated us to be like, well, now we can just do whatever we want. So the pressure's off a little bit and it made it a little bit easier. I think we were feeling like uh, pre pandemic, if we had continued down the direction that we were go going in, that we would have maybe ended up making music that we didn't like. And that was like, I think part of the source of the tension, or not even between us, the three of us, but just like the tension Internally. between us and our, and our, and the music and like the, our job and, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to make sure we felt artistically connected to what we were doing. And yeah, I don't know if that's an answer to your question, more just an insight, but yeah. Well, let's go back nearly a decade. Uh, what was the thing that brought you all together? What was, how did you all meet and form this you know, musical connection? Um, we all met in college. Uh, Katie transferred to USC my freshman year. Mm -hmm. so, and they're both a year older than me. And Katie's uh, major was my major, but her minor was Naomi's major. And we just all met in different classes. Mm -hmm. And then Katie introduced me to Naomi. And I think the thing that like made us feel drawn to each other was like this kind of like otherness in a vast sea of... Um, you know, frat, like, college, and we're just, like, these weird, not weird, uh, cool, I would say, actually, <laughs> uh, like, queer <laughs> kids, and I don't know, I, I think we felt, like, seen by um, each other, and it just kind of, like, as soon as I found out Naomi played guitar, like, I was like, oh, why don't we play together, and Katie and I had already been in music classes together and had played together before, so we just decided to jam, and then um, they're both Capricorn. So as soon as we decided the jam actually work started <laughs> and work has never ended. I think yeah. I would say since <laughs> I like that astrologically, I mean, it it's, works out. it's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's real. So your, your voices, when they come together, uh, when you, when you listen to some of the recorded music, you know, it's so, it's so fun and kind of, uh, poppy. And as one of my coworkers said, a real bop, uh, <laughs> that, uh, you, you sort of don't hear how beautiful your harmonies are. Oh. And I think this was a really nice chance to, to hear it stripped down. Totally. To, to be able to, to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I always find the, the moment when people connect on their voices actually sounding good. Because you could have been like, oh, cool, you play guitar. I want to be in a band with you. And then you get in the room and you're like, oh, like this isn't gelling together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah. Was, what was it like when you guys were like, Oh, maybe we have something here. That's such a good question. Um, uh, I think we all have very different, this is a bit nerdy, but I think we all have just very different like style and taste in terms of what we like to play and sing. I think in that way, the difference sort of like allows it to gel a little bit more. Um, in terms of singing, I think we have had to like work on the, the blend for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think we all just have, we, we, we see eye to eye on a lot of like, for, you know, sort of canon like artists for us in the band of like, we can all agree on liking this, but we all have different taste and I think different experiences with music that allow us to bring a little bit of something like different to the table. So we're all like, I don't know. It's very, it feels very complimentary. Like, you know, I can't play what Joe plays on the guitar and you know, I can't write the way Katie writes and, or play the way she plays. So we just all do our own thing. And I think it like, it is a nice balance. We respect each other's taste. So. And I do feel like, like when we realized that we like had a little something going on was kind of early on, like when we started yeah. playing together. Um, Cause like literally from our first jam session, like I took that Ableton session and like, wrote a pop song over it and was like this could be like something and I think that that's actually what we return to like over the pandemic when it's like because in college like no one was asking us to be a band no one was like where's the record we just felt like <laughs> we have something here you know um and so it was really cyclical of just being like it is meaningful when you find like a connection with other people um to be in a band is just a really special thing. Like, and you can't control that if it works with other people or if it doesn't, you know, and you do have to work to keep it, 
keep it going. But the uh, initial, like, we work together, like, that's just a gift, you know? So what was the one artist that you all agreed on? I mean, there's too many, actually. Katie, Katie, uh, Katie and I, one we time, had a moment. Yeah, we were uh, drunk as a skunk. We were um, drunk as skunks. Drunk as skunks. Yeah. Now sober as October. Yeah, October. October. Um, <laughs> you know that old phrase. You know, uh, this is kind yeah. of where the writing comes. <laughs> this, this is, is kind yeah, of, that's actually how the, the songs song. come yeah, about. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Of, it we never were, stops. We were like drunk at a party, and we were talking about Fiona Apple, and we're like, "What's your favorite Fiona Apple song?" And Katie said, uh, "Not about love." And I think I decided to fall on the floor. Yeah, you did. Um, with enthusiasm, I was charmed. Yeah, uh, so charming in that way. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, there's so many. Like, we we all. But we just have like there. I think that's something that's funny is like we do all have very similar taste in certain ways. I mean, there's a few things that we'll like not disagree on, but I'm like, that's cool for you. Yeah, that you like. <laughs> but that, you can hear like our that. influences like where they come together in certain ways. Like, um, we're all like big into Fru Fru and Imogen Heap. Yeah, and but even from like the albums. album that we were talking about that we connected on the Fru Fru album, we all liked different songs. Like, yeah, totally. the, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that yeah. is. That's our style, I feel like. Yeah. And then we also, I mean, there was a big phase. There was a big Peter Gabriel phase. I mean, always. Life yeah. is a Peter Gabriel phase. Yeah, really anything that so. Daniel and Wall worked on, too. Like, we yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always been very fun to show each other music. That's a big part of, like, you know, staying inspired for us as a band. Yeah, and coming together. I, I just like that idea of the pandemic being such a time to reevaluate yeah decide if you love something anymore or not mm -hmm. and then or you, someone yeah <laughs> uh, all, all the bubbles have now burst yeah sorry if you were in a couple during the pandemic it's pretty much over now <laughs> for everybody. uh but no the, the band <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry no I'm kidding you're in a beautiful couple it's gorgeous um no but uh that that idea of um, deciding and making that decision and then finding somebody who really believes in you because now you guys are on Satisfactory. Yeah. With, yeah. And I, I, I'm curious uh, because it is such a new indie label uh, and run by uh, a musician who's mm. doing quite well for herself. Do you, do you feel like that's a, a different energy than, you know, obviously it's very different from RCA, mm -hmm. but, you know, what is the difference having somebody who is a, a fellow musician kind of running the show? I mean, I think Phoebe is just kind of a marketing genius, if I, I'm being real. I think there's just like a creative element to being on an indie that uh, we found to be like part of the, the decision making process for us that we found to be really attractive. It's like she knows how to make like it's like it, with even like this, we got given some like satisfactory merch and um we all have sweatpants that say IBS, I believe in satisfactory. And it's just like things, I know that's so silly to say, but it's just like having someone who is helping you figure out a way to communicate like who you are to the masses and someone who's just like very inspired in that way, I think was um, super charming. I think it speaks to our generation too, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I think even just as much as it is about her being a musician, it's about like, we are f living through the same zeitgeist. We're very close in age. Like, yeah, we have a lot of the same references. I think, I mean, for Phoebe, who like is such a brilliant songwriter, makes such devastating music. So much of her like presence as a person is so funny and like about having, you know, a laugh and doing things just because they um, amuse you and uh, in finding creative ways to like express your sense of humor. And I think, that's important to us too. Like, I don't know, maybe we, <laughs> maybe we have a bit of like triplet, <laughs> triplet vibes, yeah. feel a little insular sometimes, but I think at the same time, like, I don't know, we like to have a laugh and like just be goofy together. And I don't think that there was like a, you know, an integrated place for that in our former, you know, situation. Um, and it's quite possibly just due to like a lack, an intergenerational sort of lack of understanding mm -hmm. that can happen when you get into these like more corporate environments. Um, yeah. I would say like one of the other differences that I think we're still like getting used to is um, I don't think we realized like we were used to getting at a major like creative, you know, feedback on like 
uh, an album that like could be critical and it's really interesting like indies like that's not as common like you just have the freedom to like you just make it and then they're gonna say okay great we'll put it out and like you know she really just wants us to have free reign and I think yeah. initially that it's was kind funny. of freaky for us we were yeah. like aren't you gonna tell us that like half these songs aren't good enough or what's the deal like so it's been interesting to like kind of live through like I don't know, relearning to just trust like our own stamp of approval. Um, yeah. More than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things about independent labels and giving, giving the artists more control, I think is because the, you know, when you think of like, ah, oh, the heyday of rock and roll, the heyday of music, it's like there was such freedom yeah. for people mm -hmm. to really like express themselves as who they were. And then things became really like, this is a business. This is your job. Yeah. And and now it does feel very much like there is a, a movement in music to get back to hmm. having fun and yeah. in, enjoying what you're doing. And I know it is a it, it is a bit of a grind and it is, you know, waking up every day and doing doing the job. Thank you again for being here. <laughs> uh, but there there is uh, you know, that that thing of making sure that you are having fun and and I think having people who uh, believe in you is a part of that. Yeah. And with that, that idea of the grind, you guys have been on tour for a while now. And I saw you at South by Southwest earlier <laughs> this year at like 2 a.m. And you guys were like high, high energy. Yeah. It, was, it was really, really uh, one of the weirdest South by Southwest I've ever been at. But it was I mean, great same, to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to see that performance. And, you know, this is kind of a weird transition year as far as like uh -huh. being back on the road. Uh, do you guys remember the first show that you played back on the road? What did it feel like to yeah. be kind of doing that again? I think it's we're still getting used to it. I mean, like, even though we, we did our first show, I think our first shows were with Phoebe. And, and they were literally opening, the day Silk dropped. Yeah, it was the day that Silk came out. Um, the day after. The thing that is, I, I think that day in particular, I was like, oh, so this feeling in my body, um, I forgot that I actually needed this to be a part of my life. But I, I think that we're honestly, if I'm being completely frank, we're, we're still adjusting to like playing. We just started playing headline shows again. And we didn't know like uh, how grueling it is. Like we really, when we play a set, we put our entire like souls into playing the set. Mm -hmm. And so we still are getting used to getting used to it. And also like negotiating, like how, how is my body feeling? Like how is my mental health? Like what do I need to do to take care of myself? And I don't know, we're, we're still on a road of discovering like how do we integrate like playing these songs and making it sustainable for, you know, hopefully touring this record for a minute. Yeah. 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 It, it can be, it can be grueling on the body. I'm, I'm curious, would you guys, if you could, <laughs> would you be like late stage Beatles? We only want to be in the studio. We want to make the most insane music and like really get in there. Or are you more like, we want to be on the road. We want to be on stage. It might be different for each of us. Yeah. Today yeah. I'm feeling like I would like to be in the studio in a cave, please. Um, but I don't yeah. know. I think it's actually a spectrum. If yeah. I had to guess, you want your late stage Beatles. You like being on the road. I like. I don't love like the you don't act love the road of touring. Lifestyle, but I don't you love like the shows. lifestyle, but I like playing a show. Like I do have uh, the need to like the break a glass speed. over my head. You know what I mean. Um, very Iggy not pop, that I will yeah. just roll around in the yeah. in the glass, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I would like it to like be like right next to my house. Yeah, <laughs> that we've would just be the been, idea. <laughs> we've been like so lucky in that we haven't had like really exponential shifts in our career that have required us to like adjust in a way that you know we're not capable of like overnight. Um, we've kind of been able to like grow into it. You know, touring and in initially was a really scary thing for me and I I'm grateful that I like had time to adjust and um I think that we just this is just another change like we're kind of used to being like the opening band and the opening slot and like that has its own you get comfortable being like I'm cool with being like not the one that everyone's expecting something from or I'm cool with playing like the half hour set versus like 
being a headliner, it's, it's its own adjustment. Um, and I think that, you know, just as sensitive little babies and also as like <laughs> queer people and people of marginalized genders and different experiences in life, it's like, it's just normal that we have to like kind of adjust to like our lives and our careers getting bigger and just being like, yeah, we, we are up for this and we can do this, even though sometimes it feels like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, you guys are doing it. And the tour is going to continue. Uh, so thank you very much for stopping in today. Uh, Muna, the self-titled album is out now. You can pick it up and listen to it over and over again. Or you can enjoy their session uh, with some really, really beautiful acoustic performances. And Muna, thank you all so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's Jade with The Current. Thank you for checking out another Current session. And thank you very much to uh, today's video crew, which is Eric Stromstad and Thor Kramer Borneman. Uh, Eric Romani is our engineer, and Derek Stevens is our producer today. Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>